Hey everybody, today we've got an Optima HD 143X that was sent in. Uh, this was sent in because the uh, gentleman bought a new lamp, put the lamp in, and, and he was getting some flickering. And so he thought maybe it was the lamp, um, or possibly the ballast, probably not the lamp. So it, uh, it arrived today. Uh, the old lamp is in it now. This is the new lamp. It's a uh, BL FP240G. It's a 240-watt Osram bulb in there. And you can see it's a pretty straightforward lamp. It has the, uh, the nice IR block coating. Wires are tight. I can see the projector is pretty dusty, though. Just this lamp for the short period it was in there, it picked up some dust on the silicone. But we'll put that lamp in later. First things first, let's give this a once over before we plug it in. I don't know if you guys can see that USB connector. It's uh, literally packed with dust. So I suspect what we're going to find is a lot of dust and a dirty color wheel sensor. Hopefully you can see that. How much dust is in there? It's like... It's packed. And then, you know, just look at the uh, the zoom and focus, or the zoom uh, wheel there. So, I did have it open, so that might be why the case is like that. But let's pop this screw out and take the lamp out. And then we will uh, see what's how bad the dust is. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's going to be significant. Come on. Come on, little screw. Get out there all the way. Ah, up oh, there it goes. Couldn't get it to slide. Man, it just slides over. Yeah, it's not terrible in there. Looks like he did give it a little bit of a cleaning. I can see... Some dust there. Definitely ran hot. That plastic's very heated looking. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then there used to be... Oh, no. That's all right. I was going to say... Oh, you can kind of see the discoloration on the fan. I thought there might have been a sticker there, but there's not. At home, I have uh, HD26, which is very similar. Oh, good. I can take this lens cover off. Anytime they have the raised little latch there, I can take the cover off without worrying. So it should be five screws, or six screws, I mean. Nope, oh, no. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Let me just look in there and make sure. Yep, I don't see the sixth in there. So that means we should be able to get. Yeah, none of the top. Now the cover should come off. There we are. Come on, a little more. Oh, do I have to take. I might have to take this off. No, just pulls out. Come on, yeah, it just pulls off. Okay. Oh yeah, that's dusty. So that just pops off. Now lift that cover off. It was pretty dusty. Got that. It looks like he did get the majority of it out. That's good. The DMD heat sink is clean. That's good. The uh, color wheel sensor, I'll bet you, has some dust in it, though. It's a color wheel down there. There's the ballast right there. Let's, uh, let's see. There's our door switch. 
Let's see, door switch is not that. It's a two pin wire that goes, that goes, where does it go? Oh, it goes down to the power supply. Okay, I was going to see if I could just shove something in there to bypass it, but I'm going to have to clamp something in there to hold it. Let me use that guy. There we go. I'm going to fire it up and see what happens. Let's put the uh, lamp in. I wonder why they designed it this way. I don't know what's going to hold that lamp connector in. Like, what, what keeps that from coming off? Like, I'd expect a connector of sorts, something to, I don't know. It's just weird the way that wire sits. Granted, this is a uh, cost-optimized build, we could say. Let me just fix that little back clip that was bugging the heck out of me. Oh. Is that not... Why is that not dropping in? Maybe I should pop this main board off and do it all once over. Let me just uh, let me see what we got. Maybe I don't have to go all the way. Let's just try loosening these a little. Let's see if we can get things to line back up. Like that. <laughs> That's what I want. Much better. AC goes in there. Oh, no. AC goes in there, and that is a thermal fuse, thermal breaker up to there. That thing with the 4-3 marked on it. Alright, door switch is bypassed. Lamp is in. Power is connected. We're in standby. Let's hit the power. I think that's a power button. Oh, no. is this one. Yep. All right. Flash, flash. Color wheel came up. Good. Lamp came on. Also good. Hopefully we get a, uh, and get a picture. All right, we got a picture. I like it. So far, so good. And let's see, let's just, uh, oh, this doesn't have a VGA. Right, this is HDMI only. All right, let me get an HDMI source. Video one, we'll do HDMI one as monitor one, and then I think this is monitor two. I have my uh, Raspberry Pi four with the cooling fan. Let's get that on. We're on HDMI one. Okay, it's getting the signal. So there's a Raspberry Pi boot screen. So while it's doing that, let's 
check the menu to HDMI. All right, and it's, uh, it's been running an hour now, and it's been holding this pattern. It hasn't flickered, just keeps running. So I think operational-wise we're in good shape. I just think it needs a uh, good cleaning. So let's get in here and turn it off. Let me turn off my uh, Pi too and get that out of the way. And once this fan shuts down, we'll uh, open it up more. Oh, the fan shut down. So let's open it up and get it all clean. Get the lamp out first. Let's get Mr. Lamp out because Mr. Lamp is quite hot. Okay, let's see. I'll get my door bypass off. Like I said, it's already pretty clean, but I just want to make sure. So let's take these out. Is that? Yeah, that's going. How am I missing? I wonder if these might have to come out. Oops, these might have to come out. Ah, too small. Yep. One, two. So don't forget to take the <clears throat> two HDMI screws out. Now the main board comes loose. And we're not going to take the main board out. I just want to move it off to the side because I want to get under here and make sure there's no um, dust or hidden problems under this where the power supply and ballast are because we were a little uh, concerned about the ballast. We'll just get this back panel out of the way. All right, that one comes out. So now, what do we got? A, a clip, oh, tape. There we are. So the power supply is down here. Holding that in. Is it just those screws and a couple screws around the side? It's curious that a lot of problems are resolves with just a, uh, a disassembly, a cleaning, and a reassembly. Oh. There's a second one right here. There we are. Now... 
the whole thing. Yeah, there we go. Now the whole thing's coming up. Let me get that. Let's get that out of the way. Okay, so the main board's now free. Let's just get the main board out of the way. But let's mark these fans. There we go. Oh, as an aside, it's crazy how small a main board for a projector has become. Oh, this particular one did have a provision for VGA. And the uh, USB connector. Come on, focus. You can see it there. <laughs> I'll clean that out before it all goes back together. But to get the power supply out, it looks like i got to take all that out. So I think we're going to skip taking the power supply out and just kind of let's see if we can just kind of give it a, a visual. Unless getting those two screws out just worked. Let's see. Got that bracket out of the way. See, and that wraps underneath. Oh, I see something. I'm trying to leave the ground wire in, but there's a screw hiding right there. Does that put one? Does that loosen everything? Maybe. Yep. And what's stuck? Got some sticky, something sticking. Door switch is out of the way. All right, let's move. Ah, there was one more screw right there underneath the speaker again oh, come here throwing screws everywhere now, now there we go now to come out and then I can disconnect the uh, lamp connector. I'll slide that chassis back. Because we just want to make sure there's nothing wrong in here. So let's see. Can I slide it this way? I can if I disconnect the ground, by the way. I'm actually going to leave that on the end of the screwdriver because it's going right back in as soon as we check the uh, ballast and the capacitors. So there's the whole power supply. It's a power supply and ballast together. Not what I like because, you know, if your ballast goes bad, then your SOL, it's all one piece. This was more common back when and our projectors were kind of newer in the world. But, I mean, it works. It's fine. I just, I like when they're separate so that you can repair them. But everything looks good. Capacitors look happy. Nothing bloated. No large amounts of dust everywhere. A little bit right here. I'm going to go hit it with the air. And then uh, we'll put it back together.
Come on. Yeah, should probably go the other way. Get that just a little there we are now everything's in place this is going to go here to get that back in position oops come on there we go so we can put this partly back together as it sits Just have those two screws over here to hold it in. So that's cool. Let's put all of these back in. Come on. There we go. Two on this end. Let's get those out of the way. And then the the door switch plugs in right there. So Got to remember to put that in. Smooth that speaker. So just take the speaker out of the way. So I got to put the uh, lamp connector back in. And they had that routed in an unusual manner. Let's put that in and then get that little, get that ferrite bead where it fits right there and so it's not blocking the door switch Get the blower fan out of the way that stuff out of the way there kidoki was good I'm going to go uh, just blow any loose dust out of here. That took care of the dust. There was just like a little bit of stragglers. i got to get in here. I'm going to wipe the uh, edges of the fan blade off. That's when these edges get dirty, the fan stops moving air as efficiently. And sometimes that can be more than enough to cause a problem. What a weird way to route the lamp wire. I don't know why they'd run it so close to the low voltage. I mean, it's insulated and all that, but still. It's just weird to... Uh, have them all so close like that. Let's see, can I get it? Let's see, I'd rather have it down in a way. Let's try, we'll try that. that. That should be good. That goes back in here. That's going to lay there. And then 
door switch. off in first see if I need to get the nut driver or not or if I can that might do it Let's try Let's try this one this here. Come on. There we are. That structure is back in. Oh, this had a blown up lamp in it at one point. See that? Come on, focus. See that? It's a piece of quartz from a arc tube. Now we got our main board. The main board is going to drop in. Underneath that rim, it lined up on the front. That's good. That's good. Good and good. Then that will be for that screw. So we're going to put in that one and these three. So it was. This teeny tiny one. And then a wide pan head. And then that one. Low voltage power to the main board. Oops, come on. Get straight. There we are. Ballast control up there. System fan, and looks like this one goes down here. We got the blower fan, those two. Oh, almost forgot.
right, those are in. Let's go to the color wheel now. And we have the color wheel sensor plugged back in. And then now we will reinstall the connector. For the color wheel, and then I still have that tape, so we'll put that tape back down over it. Yep, not pulled too tight. All right, this this is good. Let's get my uh, door bypass tool. Just wonder why there's nothing to clip that connector in place. Just weird. All right, that's good. So this is just to make sure I remember to plug everything back in all the way. As long as this comes on, then I'm gonna put more of it back together and then we'll run it for a while. coming up. Lamps on, fans are on. HDMI one searching. Lamp. Let's go to test pattern again. Yep. So, we are, we have a white test pattern. Looks pretty good to me. I say let's uh, shut it back down. And let's put it back together some more. I have to remember to hit record. I forgot to hit record. So I did not get a uh, view of putting this back together. Um, you get the idea though, you saw me take it apart. I'm not going to take it apart again. I had to get all of the plastic clips back together and boy they don't, they don't like to play. Let's see, yep, three it'll be. Number three. And what I do is I oh up oh, there it is. I'm trying to find the where the threads start so I don't cut new ones. I don't think I got that one. I think I just made new threads on that one. That's what I thought. Now there was no screw in that one. So let me go see what I have. think that'll do it instead of a BenQ so don't tell Optima oh I didn't get this at the beginning but the uh, 143x is a regulator regulatory number VDH DNT so now 
We have everything buttoned back up. We have the HDMI screws for the back. That one. And this one. So the, the owner was pretty close. They almost had it. I think if they had just maybe uh, cleaned a little further, it just kind of slowed down a little. I think the mistake people make when they first work on these is that they expect everything to go fast. Bing, bang, boom. But you can't expect that. So let's put this back in. And then I'll plug it back in and make sure it comes on again. Won't get that tight. Just snug. Well, and let's put the lens cap back in place. There it goes. Looking good. Let's go back to the test pattern. Green grid, purple or magenta grid, white grid. I'm gonna leave it on here for a bit, about 10 minutes or so, and uh, I'm gonna put a signal on it. So I'm gonna stop the video here. I'm gonna let this run. But if you have any questions about your Optima DLP projector or something similar, go ahead and uh, stick it in the comments. Um, there's a lot of people around who can help. And uh, if you don't subscribe, think about subscribing. If you already subscribe, I really appreciate it. And as always, thank you for watching.